And we can find out the views of the panel with Natalie. Thank you very much to Ali there. So that is half-time in our quarter-final in the League Cup. And City are currently losing 2-0. However, do not fret, Blues, because City have many a brilliant comeback from being 2-0 down. So I am staying positive despite that first half performance. So I'm still joined in the studio by Jolien Lescott and by Esme Morgan. I'll give you the option, first of all, would you like to talk about that first half or do you want to talk about hippos and crocodiles? <laughs> <laughs> we probably should address the first yeah, half, really. Right, we're going to have to talk about the first <laughs> half, everybody, but after that we will talk about hippos and crocodiles because there is a lot of texts been coming in. You lot are loving the hippo and crocodile debate, but we must tackle the first half We've got to the point of the show. So, Esme, what is going on? <laughs> I think it was just the intensity was lacking and everything was just a bit sloppy and, and slow and just didn't seem to be clicking. We just seemed to be on different pages, a bit disjointed. So it just wasn't flowing in the normal way that it would. So I'm kind of expecting to see a couple of changes, if not at half time, pretty early into the second half to try and make a difference. But... The team's got so many talented players and they'll come back, come out firing in the second half. So I wouldn't like to be Southampton in the first 10 and 15 minutes. So talk us through the, how the defence has been doing, first of all, Jolien. Yeah, like, like I said, then it's disjointed. It hasn't got a rhythm and not just defending, it's like in possession. I think that's what the first goal has come from. It's a couple of sloppy passes and transitions happen very quickly. And, and fair play to Southampton has pounced on them. Um, great finish. Um, can't argue with that and he said it's just it's just the rhythm that Pep always speaks about it's having that understanding and and concentration that is needed to just play the simple passes and instead of thinking about where your next move is it's like well it needs to get there it needs to get where the destination I want it to get to and then I can I can move on and we see in the first goal Gomez is passed it a little bit short trying to overlap or underlap even and then they've capitalised. Yeah, and there was a Calvin Phillips mistake before that, but then we won the ball back. And then Sergio Gomez plays that short pass that is too short and Southampton pounce on it um, and, and ultimately go on and, and score. What was your kind of analysis of that first goal, Esme? I think you pretty much summed it up, to be fair. Just a couple of sloppy mistakes. I think Gomez released the ball far too early. I, I mean we try and base our style of play off the men's team and they always say commit a player before you play a pass so draw a defender in and then release it but he kind of played it before he'd drawn anyone into him and that just meant the defenders were set to jump on the loose pass and come up the other end and it was a great ball in and a really good finish the guy getting across Kyle Walker who maybe that's a bit of a highlight of his unfamiliarity in the role in terms of not being open enough knowing where the, um, the attacker is coming from and he's just made a run in front of him and scored so it was just a, a string of errors really that led to that. It almost surprised us a little bit because although we hadn't been playing great it still felt like it come a little bit against the run of play and then five minutes later they go and get another one Jolien. What do you make of Ortega's positioning for that goal? Yeah slightly strange I don't know if he was anticipating the pass or the potential pass that could have gone through to one of the forwards but when you see it go in you're like that's not really in the corner, it's, it's in the middle. So again, I'm, I'm sure he'll be disappointed with it. Um, but the finish was nice. He obviously read the situation. He obviously anticipated the keeper trying to anticipate that pass and then thought, no, he's quite far off his line. And we've seen it a few years ago, when was it in the FA Cup when, was it Che Adam scored a wonder goal? And that wasn't obviously at that level, but it was of a high quality, definitely. Yeah, um, so that's the two goals. In terms of the other kind of key things about Southampton's performance, as May Romeo Lavia is kind of making his presence known, obviously looking to show his former club um, how good he, he is now. How have you? What have you made of his first half? I thought he's been really good. I was looking forward to watching him before the game, not hopefully having an influence <laughs> as, as great as he has done. Um, but he's been brilliant out of possession, just shutting down City's attacks really well. He's got across to both Foden and Gundogan and shut them out on different occasions. And on the ball, he's driven forward really well. So City have been stung by the success of their academy really tonight because these are all things that he would have had um, drilled into him while he was playing for us. 
When a team is in such a bad position, Jolie, and you're Southampton on bottom of the Premier League, and Nathan Jones hasn't won in the league yet since he came in. He's only had the two wins, the FA Cup won just gone in the previous League Cup round. Where does this performance come from? Like, how are they How are they doing so badly in the Premier League and then pulling this out? Yeah, again, we spoke about it, or you mentioned it before. It's like, it's a different pressure and a relief of the, the pressure and the normality of the Premier League. It's kind of like, well, I can disregard. Players are good at disregarding negative form in different competitions. So it would be like, oh, this is a kind of side relief. Yes, we're not in great form Premier League, but this isn't that. This is a cup and you can kind of just have a different level of enthusiasm for that game and that occasion. And obviously they have that tonight and they're winning 2-0. So, um, the positives, I always like to look for a positive. Can't get any worse, Esme. Only way is up in this second half. I see that as a positive. Um, you said you're expecting changes either at half-time or quickly. What areas of the pitch or what players are you expecting to perhaps come on? Um, I think I could see a centre-back coming on. We were discussing that just to move Kyle Walker back to his comfortable position at right-back, put Drow Cancelo at left-back and just have a bit more familiarity in those roles. But I think we're likely to see Haaland if we're chasing a goal. There's no one who you'd look to more to kind of pull you out of a sticky situation at the minute than him. So I can definitely see him coming on and maybe in combination with De Bruyne just to feed him and create those chances. Yeah, Haaland and De Bruyne are both on the bench, Jolene. But of course, we've got the derby on Saturday, lunchtime kickoff on Saturday. What do you think, whether they come on or they don't come on, will tell us about Pep's thinking about tonight ahead of the derby? Yeah, um, I think he'll, he'll tell us a little bit more in regards to the next 15, 20 minutes and the scoreline and the stage of the game. I think then he'll, he'll be like, he may start to think or shift focus a little bit in regards to weekend's game. But I don't think he'll... His decisions will be based on the derby right now. It'll be, it'll, they'll be based on whether he makes changes or not. It'll be because of what he sees here and what he's thinking about this game rather than what he's worried about on the weekend. I think as you get to the latter stages and it may be out of reach or in reach potentially, that's when it, it may shift a little. In the Chelsea game, you made two substitutions at half-time, which is quite unlike Pep really to make half-time changes. Are you expecting a half-time change today or do you think, are you waiting for that 15 to No, I am, I am to be fair. I'm, I'm kind of in the camp of, I, I think Gomez potentially come off. Again, can, Cancelo can move over, but he may bring on Rico Lewis as well and, and play Nathan Ake and Rico Lewis as full-backs um, and keep Kyle Walker set mid, set half. But listen, whatever Pep has seen, which I'm sure it's different to the way we've seen the game, the changes will be geared for that. And we'll definitely see a change in the style, the rhythm and the performance in the second half because he will demand that and that's what we're good at. I think we've seen it at Stamford Bridge in the league game. I think we, it was a quite lacklustre performance and it kind of wasn't as, as fluid as we would have seen or would have hoped and then all of a sudden he makes some changes and then bang, it's just dominance. So that wouldn't surprise me if that's the case second half. I think that's why I still feel quite calm and not, not too worried about the game because I know, Esme, that we have enough when we switch it on to score three goals in 45 minutes. So I, I feel like we can still do this. We don't need 45 minutes to score three goals. We saw that with the final uh, game of the season Aston, against Aston Villa last year when we won the league. So all it needs is a spark and a shift in momentum and a few players just to take the scruff at, game by the scruff of the neck and just say, do you know what, we're going to turn this around. And I guess the club's motto is fight till the end. So until that final whistle's blown, it's never over with City. Exactly, yes, <laughs> exactly. I love that coming from the player and the fan. Um, right, I want to move on quickly and just have a big, important conversation that we started <laughs> before the game. It's really got you all going on the WhatsApp. And indeed, that is the question that Rodri posed to his teammates. Would you rather get in the water with a crocodile or a hippo? So, WhatsApp has been going nuts for this. So, we've got... Um, loads of people, someone who's just called themselves Seven. Crocodile, I'd jump on its back and get ready for a roll. Good for you. Gift has said hippos are the most dangerous and can snap a crocodile in two just like that. Mm -hmm. David Shepherd has said hippos to one side, thanks for tonight's show. Always good, but a great atmosphere on the show, but no more hippo talk. Fair enough, David. That is your prerogative. <laughs> uh, Ponderline has said the hippo is less likely to attack you. And Unknown Boss has said between a croc and a hippo, 
I'd rather be with a hippo. And then do you know what? I could keep scrolling. There is, I think, the most text we've ever had on anything <laughs> on the hippo and crocodile debate. Have either of you changed your opinions on the hippo crocodile debate? No. No, I'm sticking with the hippo. Yeah. Sticking with the hippo. You'd rather get in the water with a hippo? Yeah. Hippo. 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 Hippo for me as well. Thank you very much. If you wonder what the heck is going on right now, you need to watch Inside City from today. I got the notification through the app on my phone this afternoon. I want to say about half past one, maybe a little bit earlier, and I immediately watched it. So you can get that on the app. You can get that on City's YouTube, so Inside City, and you'll know what we are talking about. So a couple of minutes now until um, the second half begins. What do you want to see immediately from the team in this second half? I think just an increase in ball speed, sort of receiving the ball, moving it on quickly, because I think that sort of sets the tone then for everything else in the game. The press then becomes a little bit more aggressive and people move into position faster because they have to because of the movement of the ball. So I think just an increase in intensity, which I'm fully expecting because I don't think there's any way they'll come out for the second half with that sort of slow rhythm. So I think we'll see a complete shift um, once it kicks off again. So we don't know anything, we don't know any substitutes yet, but what we can tell you is that um, BBC Radio Manchester's Mike Miner, who's at the game, has tweeted saying that Nathan Ake, Kevin De Bruyne and Riyad Mahrez are all out on the pitch warming up. Would any of those make sense to you, Jolian? Well, all of them. <laughs> all of them would make sense because they're all quality players, but in regards to the Kevin and the Riyad, you, you'd, you'd like to say, well, that's Cole. Um, and he doesn't tend to move players out of position, does he? It, it, it kind of like, well, if Kevin's coming on, he's coming on in the midfield for a midfielder rather than for a winger and then putting someone else on the wing. So that would suggest uh, Elkai El or, or even, even Calvin Phillips. Again, it's in regards to the, taking the performance and the result out of the equation. It's his first start, so he's still maybe managing minutes. So in regards to that, may have always been in the plan of him to play 45 and then... Can Ilkay come as a as a holding midfielder? Yeah, would you be happy with those substitutes if they happened at half time? Yeah, I think the form that Mares has been on recently, you'd back him to come on and add a bit of spark and change the game. I think Cole's maybe struggled a bit to get on the ball and have those opportunities to dribble and drive, which is something that Riyad's been brilliant at. And De Bruyne's creativity is something that, again, has been lacking in that first half. So I can definitely see um, those two in particular making a difference. And if Ake was to come on, I'd be interested to see how he shifts that around because we were mostly talking about maybe a centre-back coming on and uh, Walker and Drow switching, but we shall see. I've got some lovely Riyad Mahrez stats for you that hopefully it'll, it'll make you feel a bit more positive as well. Since joining City for the 18-19 campaign, Riyad Mahrez has been directly involved in 12 goals in the League Cup, eight goals and four assists. That is the joint most of any player in that period alongside Phil Foden, who's had five goals and seven assists. Also, Riyad Mahrez has scored four goals in his last four League Cup games, as many as he had in his first 15. So hopefully, if he is coming on, he carries that carries that scoring on, and we can see there is a change. Three, there, I think. Oh, Manuel Akanji, Nathan Ake. And did you see anybody else? De Bruyne. I think. Came so De Bruyne came on. on well. yeah. De Bruyne came on for Cole. Okay. Carl so Walker. Is indeed. Yeah. And then you would assume Gomez, Gomez if Ake's 21, coming on at left back. Yeah. Right, yeah. Gomez yeah. and Walker are off. Mm. Right, so there is changes. We're going to go back over now to Alistair Mann and Michael Brown for second half commentary and stay positive, Blues, because just remember, the last time we were 2-0 down, we scored three goals in the second half and we won the league that day. We'll be back with you at full time. Well, welcome back to St Mary's. A triple change at half time. Gomez, Palmer and Walker have gone off. A kanji Ake and De Bruyne have come on, so proactive to say the very least is the manager and mindful of the fact that the Blues are